the second panel is focused on the private sector. Private sector in that specific group is the businesses. And uh, the proposition is to consider that the private sector is the engine of growth for research and innovation in food, nutrition security, and sustainable agriculture in Africa and Europe. And I would like to give the mic to uh, my dear friend, Mrs. Isabel Hippolyte, who is the scientific manager uh, for Environment, Ecosystem and Biological Research Department at the Agence Nationale de la Recherche in France, and who is a member of LIB for FNSSA. We work in the same work package. So, uh, Isabel, I hope that you are on. Yes, I am. <laughs> Good. So, uh, please go ahead with the, uh, uh, the presentation of the topics and then, and then there is the, uh, the bio of uh, the different participants which is going to be presented. Thank you very much, Tora. Thank you very much for organizing this very interesting meeting and also for, invita for inviting me to present this second very important uh, group of this meeting. Uh, we all know that uh, important bottlenecks are the, to transfer the air and I uh, research and innovation uh, re um, results to the actors for to private sector, but also for the users, which are the growers, farmers, and consumers. We already speak in the first um, part of this meeting of this important challenge of uh, of linking private sector to farmers, but also to research to, for the transfers and research innovation. And uh, we, we, it was already said the importance of scale up of this result to the industry, but also to scale down in, in certain cases for, for this sector. Then I will present the first uh, panelist. Please, Dora. <laughs> Then the first the, the first panelist is Dr. Sherif El Gabili, who is chairman for Poly Service Group of the Afri chairman of the African Committee of the Egyptian Parliament at the Fed and the Federation of Egyptian Industries and at the Egyptian Businessmen Association, which is really a very uh, complete uh, curriculum. Then if you are ready, please take the floor and I don't know if you have any presentation of just the, 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 the template fulfilled uh, on your side. Are you there? Dr. Sharif, go ahead. I understand that the, Dr. Sharif uh, prefers to give, Dr. Sharif, I understand you prefer to give a verbal presentation. Yes, I do, yes. Ms. Dora. Thank you. Yes, Please. I do, yes. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Uh, first, I'd like to thank you to invite me in, for inviting me in this very uh, challenging uh, webinar. I think it's very, you are innovative. You talk about research and innovation. I think it's an innovative uh, uh, webinar. Uh, of course, today it's very important that uh, North Africa and Europe Alliance, Europe Alliance to cooperate together because uh, agriculture has developed a lot in, in the last decade and uh, research and innovation are very important. Why? Because today we are looking for new, new kind of uh, technologies in agriculture, whether it's in irrigation, whether it's in seeds, whether it's in plant production, 
whether it, uh, um, I mean, all these elements of, uh, of agriculture are very important for us. And Europe is very well advanced in this respect. Uh, in North Africa, we have uh, several countries that we well know, uh, Tunisia, Libya, Morocco, uh, Algeria, who are, who are quite, some of them are quite developed in agriculture today. In, for example, in Egypt, we are going on to a very massive uh, agricultural reform. We are adding uh, two mega projects. Uh, one is called the, the New Delta, which in the north coast of Egypt. The other one is the 1.5 million acre uh, project, which is in different, scattered in different parts of Egypt. And these projects can be a model for what this webinar is all about. Because on these two projects, we, Egypt is embarking on going into uh, technology agriculture. We are not going into conventional agriculture. Uh, as, as you well know, that in Egypt, uh, water is becoming a very critical issue, whether for the Renaissance Dam that's being built in Ethiopia or whether with the population growth of Egypt, we are over 100 million people today. The water per capita for Egypt today is about 600 meter cube per person. The below 1,000 meters are in a critical position as, as far as water is concerned. And the of our water comes from the water from the river Nile. So, from uh, the Renaissance Dam, even if the Renaissance Dam was still to improve our water management in Egypt for agriculture. Because uh, today, changing even more than the depth, changing the conventional irrigation into uh, irrigation or pivot irrigation. We have a four uh, in this program, Delta, and we have uh, allocated the four generation for the project in the Delta. Whereas in the new land, what I'm talking about, the new delta, uh, the one and a half million acre project, we are going totally into uh, irrigation, uh, uh, irrigation. Uh, so we are doing to in e uh, We have a trouble with your, with your connection. Dora, should you, would you indicate to, to our panelists that there are some trouble with the yes. connection? Yes, the, there is obviously a problem at the, at the end at Dr. Sharif El Gabali because uh, as far as we're concerned, it's okay. Uh, maybe because we are starting to run out of schedule, we could invite Dr. Hassan Mansour who is dust uh, to uh, take the floor and when uh, Sharif is going to be to be back, then we will invite him in. Okay. Uh, as you see, Isabel. Okay, thank you so much. Then the floor will be just now to Dr. Hussein Mansour, who is the chairman. Who is ready? Who is who is speaking now? Then Dr. Yeah. Hussein Mansour is the chairman of the National Food Security Authority in Egypt. He has a, a, a bio that it is now on the, on, on the screen. He promulgates and embraced the idea of changing food safety system in Egypt and the establishment of a national authority for food safety since a long time, since it was from uh, to 2003. He served as the Agricultural Minister Plenipotentiary and head of the Agriculture Office of the Embassy of Egypt in Washington, D.C. for six years more. Former Dean 
in, uh, of Agriculture College at Ain Shams University. Research Management Coordinator and Educator in Egyptian and Middle Eastern Institution in Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Syria, and other uh, countries. He has a broad experience in international agricultural development programs through his personal engagement with Codex, USAID, FAO, ICARDA, AXAD, and a number of other international organizations. In 2016, he was elected as the chairman of Arab Food System Experts. He assisted in the establishment of the Egyptian National Agricultural Library and established a number of information and computing laboratories in the Egyptian universities and the Ministry of Agriculture. The Urban Tour is one of 10 scientists who contributed to the formation of the Arab Science and Technology Foundation in Sharjah. Thank you so much. You have then the floor and please, uh, I don't know if you have any uh, PowerPoint presentation of who you are uh, discussing just on the topic. Yes, Dr. Hassin has sent us his presentation, okay. which we are loading right now. Okay, thanks, Dora. Dr. Mansour, the floor is yours. Dr. Mansour? Ah, there he is. Dr. Hussein? Dr. Hussein? I don't know what's going on there. I don't know, what are you proposing? Do you want we skip to the next uh, panelist or are we waiting for Dr. Hussein Mansour? Uh, I think Dr. Hussein has an issue with the link. Uh, likely. Uh, yes, he has an issue with the link and uh, well, his presentation is, is ready and uh, I believe we could maybe yeah. wait for a minute to, to check whether he can connect quickly. And uh, is, do is Dr. El Gabali 
uh, where to take the floor or is does he has also still connecting trouble ايوه صباح النور جابر جابر حوات لا جابر Well, since likely we, we should skip to the next to the next speaker who is Mr. Fouet Gedish. Are you with us? I don't see Mr. I don't know. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I am Mr. Jaber. Uh, one second, Mr. Jaber. Until we here, we we are presenting the slide of uh, Mr. Okay, Fouadidish. Okay, okay. okay. Yes. Uh, Isabel, if you can kindly, uh, Mr. Jaber Hawet is on the board with Mr. Fouadidish, and he's going to represent him. But maybe you could. Introduce yes, I will uh, just Fouad introduce Fouad Guidish, who is the president of the Confederation des Entreprises Citoyennes de Tunisie, who is today, as you said, represented by Monsieur, Mr. Jaber uh, Awet. We can, you can see on the screen the different, um, the different uh, involvement of Mr. Guidish who began at the purchase department, uh, likely in, um, in Tunisia, and who is today the founder for the shareholder of Tunisia Brick, and also since uh, 20, uh, uh, 200, two, 2006, the founder, owner, and manager of Sun Antipastid. He is also from uh, tw 2004 to, to today, the founder and owner of Avigri Gold Export, international business company specialized in export of foodstuff. Please, Mr. Jaber Awet, take the floor and present um, and and present the, your 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 presentation. Or I don't know if you just took. Assalamu uh, alaikum. Uh, yes. Please be open here. My name is Jaber Hawass. I'm going to present the presentation on behalf of Mr. Fuad Gadish. Any translation? Yes, yes, there is. There is the channel translation. Okay. Should you indicate where it is on the for people who doesn't speak uh, Arabian language? Uh, interpretation is there, and then. Yes, yes you have just to click yes. at the at the bottom of the screen there is a, a map represented uh, which which is uh, called interpretation and then you should click on english or arabian okay nice okay thank you so much thank you shukran uh, Uh, on behalf of Mr. Fouad Gadish, I'm going to, my name is Jaber Hawass. I am the uh, president or the chief of the Egyptian Tunisian uh, business uh, board. اخترت على ان اقدم لكم بسطة عن المجال التمور في تونس. I chose the topic of the dates in Tunisia. وما هي الامكانيات المتاحة للدخول في شراكة مع منظمتكم الموقرة. And what are the opportunities in order to uh, be in a uh, partnership with your organization? Uh, uh, can you find them? 
أود أن أن أشكر مدام دورا. First of all, I would like to thank Mrs. Laura for the kind invitation. على إتاحة هذه الفرصة. And for giving me such an opportunity. وسوف أقدم لكم مباشرة العرض الخاص بالسيد فؤاد قديش فيما يخص منظومة الأمور في تونس. And I'm going now to present the presentation of Mr. Fouad Gaddish concerning the data system in Tunisia. تمثل منظومة التمور في تونس. Concerning the data system in Tunisia. هي عبارة على منظومة إنتاج. Is a production system. وتثمين تثمين التمور سواء كانت على مستوى التصدير. Enhancing the production of the dates. Either on exporting level. وخاصة التمور التي تسمى لدينا في تونس بدقلة النور. That they are called under the name of دقلة in Tunisia. يمثل إنتاج التمور في تونس. The production of dates in Tunisia. ركيزة من الركائز المهمة جدا. Is considered to be one of the main essential and fundamental pillar. سواء كان على المستوى الاستهلاك الداخلي. Either for the local consumption. وخاصة التصدير. And for export. يمثل في أول شيء في تونس هو أن كمنتجين يعني مزارعين أكثر من خمسين ألف مزارع جلهم أو أكثرهم من المزارعين الصغار يعني ممكن أن تجد مزارع يمتلك عشرة نخلات. So we can say that you can find a farmer that he owns like ten palm trees or date palm trees. إلى أن تصل إلى مشاريع كبيرة اللي هي تتعدد. Two farmers that they do own more than thousand date palm trees. في تونس نظرا لان العمليه تعدد المزارعين يعني 50000 مزارع in tunisia because we have a large number of farmers as we said we have more than 50000 farmers لذلك تجد اكثر من 400 مجمع تمور بالمناطق الانتاج we find that we do have more than 400 collective centers in the production areas تسهر هذه المجامع على تقديم الدعم الفني وخاصة الدعم الفني والمساعدة الفنية سواء كان لمقاومة الآفات In order to face the problem of the any problems. في المنظومة التمور في تونس. التكييف يعني. In order to face the problem of the pests. Une demi minute seulement parce qu'il y a. Nous avons ah, beaucoup okay. d'autres participants. Excusez-moi. Ok, ok. okay, okay. Um, so I, I, I don't speak French, so I'm sorry for not interpreting what's said. Uh, ok. Alors, alors, mon, le, 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 بفضل المساعدات التي ممكن 
أن تقدمها المنظمة هو ممكن خاصة ممكن إدخال المراقبة الإلكترونية We can do a kind of e-supervision, electronic supervision, and electronic monitoring. سواء كان على مستوى الإنتاج أو مستوى التسويق. Either on the exportation level or on the marketing level. نجدد يعني إحنا مستعدين لتقديم بيانات. We are totally ready to. I will provide you with all the information about the data system in Tunisia for a further cooperation with your respectful organization. Thank you very much. And I wish you all the best. Thank you and very I wish much. you to you in the near future. Yes. Thank, thank you very much for presenting the challenges and the specificities of that production in Tunisia. Now, Dora, who is the, the next, uh, with the next uh, panelist? Do we have... Do we have uh, Dr. Mansour yet or not, not yet? Or do you prefer that we are going through the list and then ask for Mr. Uh, I am here. No, no. Ah. Doc, okay. Dr. Mansour is with us. Okay. Then Dr. Mansour, should you take the floor? Yo, thank you, ma'am. Uh, I am honored to be with you. And thank you for inviting me. Uh, would you like me to speak in Arabic or in English, or which one you want to? In English, please. I would. Okay. I, I, in English, please, if you. Okay, me I will continue it. English. Would you give me the screen, or I, in, uh, or you show my presentation? I already sent it to Miss Tora. Uh, yes. Either you put it, it or I a, can. Okay. It was on the screen a, mon a moment ago. Okay. There we go. Okay. Is, is it clear now? Yes, very clear. Perfect. Oh, okay, thank you, ma'am. Uh, and uh, actually, um, uh, I am the chairman of Food Safety Agency in Egypt, and this is new agency which has appeared three years ago by uh, gathering all the responsible ministers or ministry or any organization in one single organization called uh, uh, National Food Safety Asian Authority in Egypt. And it has the sole mandate of monitoring the safety of food to, in the country. What I want to focus in this uh, couple of minutes that uh, uh, I think for African country, we need to have a sort of complying uh, re, uh, regulations in, in or, uh, related to food safety in order to facilitate the trade among Africa. And uh, we are fortunate that we have codex and we can rely on codex, which has a lot of uh, standard we can use for making our own regulation which is depend on science and depend on uh, risk-based for uh, uh, all possible contaminant of food. In the same time, some of the country, they have multiple system of food control, which make the life a little bit difficult because sometimes you don't know to whom you are talking with and sometimes they get conflict and redundancy and some of uh, the sectors will be vague and not under any responsibility. What I am trying to uh, advocate in this uh, short presentation, the idea of 
private sector to be involved in what I call and uh, co-regulation and uh, uh, to be ready with a responsibility towards the food in order to help the government to uh, expedite the uh, making the regulation needed for food safety. In general, the regulation must be, as I said, on based on risk analysis, based on uh, transparency and cooperation between industry, consumer, and the scientific arena, and the government at, at the end. If we look to the chain of uh, the food, which is start from farm, ended by the consumer. On farm, there is activity related to plant and to, and to animal, we need to have solid regulation for food agriculture practices, veterinary uh, water sanitary, LMO, which is life modified organism, which is uh, implemented in agriculture, and the standard for quality of fresh food in order to enable uh, Africa to be part of the international market of food. After harvesting, during the processing in particular, we need to have very solid regulation for food additives, food contact material, food labeling, and expiration date, and GMO, which is the difference between LMO and GMO. GMO is as food, LMO for modified organism for uh, agriculture. Between the farm and across uh, the chain until it, it reaches the consumer, we need to have PRP, prerequisite, and has and traceability. And most of the countries now, they need to know information about the food starting from farm to fork. Also, some uh, regulation toward the veterinary drug residue, uh, pesticide residue, microbial uh, contamination, and chemical contamination. All those regulations must be in place and someone has to control them to, to save the food. Also, we'd like to focus on the responsibility of uh, the uh, stockholders or the food operator, in particular what I call primary supplier. The primary supplier is the one who connect the own farm to the uh, after harvesting. And the primary production is the key weak point in the chain in most of the uh, African country. I would like also here to uh, focus on the role of uh, private sector. He can start with what we call self-regulation and which is voluntarily and to control what he produce and in the time when there is vague and there is no uh, information or good regulation from the government, he can suggest co-regulation, which is from the private sector, to be accepted from the government until they are ready to have the final regulation, which is must be, as I said, based on science and based on risk assessment and complying with the international measures in order to have what we call the least measurements that is, can be accepted by all the countries. Because of this short time, I cannot just give more information about that, but what we need is to have uh, complying with the international measures according to codex mainly and WTO for SBS and TBT. Thank you. Thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you very much also to, to, to highlight this very important and central role of regulation, especially for food quality and traceability, and also to advise us on the interest of co-regulation, which should be 
likely the, the, the future for regulation. Thank you so much for your presentation. Thank you, ma'am. The next speaker will be uh, Mr. Eduardo Cotillas, if ready to participate. Yeah, here I am, Isabel. Uh, yes. Thank you very much for your kind, the, for your very kind presentation. Thank you very much to, to Josa Dora and to Dr. Daniele Rossi, who has been possible for us to, to share with you uh, this presentation. Uh, I don't know if you could share my presentation or if not, I'm, I can share by myself. Yes, uh, I don't have your view on, on, on the screen, then likely you should present yourself briefly no. before your presentation in order that all participants know who you are. Of course, I guess uh, now it's available for you. Yes, but you should do it. Just uh, you are research and development senior manager director of the uh, Federation Española of Industries de Alimentation y Bebida in Spain, which is an important sector also for your, of course, for your country and for us also. Thanks for sharing your experience and thought. And my experience is also based on, on the, um, my, my trial record of more than 20 years in research development and innovation projects on the agri-food and uh, FMCG sectors, both in public and in private uh, companies, and uh, mainly in the Spanish um, innovation agency that is called CDTI for more than 15 years. And here I develop my different, in different positions such as manager and so on and both in Spanish and international environments well focused on Europe, LATAM and EMEA areas. And uh, since April 2019, I'm developing my role as research development and innovation senior manager, as you said, uh, Isabel, at the Spanish Food and Drink Industry Federation called FIAB, and as the general secretary of the Food for Life Spain Technology and Platform. That is uh, the biggest Spanish technology and platform of the agri-food uh, sector, promoting hundreds of research development and innovation projects. Now I'm going to share uh, the most important thing that I guess is the, um, our, our point of view. That is this one, sorry. So which one is the, the, the relevance of um, North Africa Alliance for, for us? Well, I guess it's a extremely high relevance for research and development projects in the agri-food sector, you know, for here, for the private companies in Spain, it's extremely important to, to have very different links between uh, Southern Europe and North of Africa mainly. Uh, I mean, because we have several uh, similarities with uh, regarding the crops and the food industry and transformation and so on. Which should be our main features? Well, of course, collaboration among private and public bodies is completely necessary. Of course, this project is, is now funded uh, by the European Commission throughout the Horizon 2020, but now we are going to, to, to enjoy a lot with the Horizon Europe for the next seven years. And uh, I guess it's going to be extremely interesting to explore the different opportunities between Europe and Africa. And of course, to provide uh, uh, Spanish uh, European countries, I said, uh, regarding these uh, opportunities uh, for SMEs, startups, and so on, that are very interested in participating in these projects between Europe and, and Africa. And of course, uh, I'd like to, to have a couple of words regarding the coordination between different geographical areas, uh, mainly throughout the European Commission, as I told you before, and also regarding the Prima, pro the Prima program, that is the one that is trying to to establish a good connection uh, among different countries, among different stakeholders for both uh, geographical areas. And uh, how to improve the contribution, of course, uh, establish very strong alliances is extremely uh, important for, for all of us and be able to carry out projects as this one that now we are involving, uh, trying to, to get different projects uh, among these uh, different stakeholders. Uh, of course, the, 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 the most important thing, I guess, it's uh, trying, to, trying to collaborate to, to establish a very strong network and try to promote uh, these joint initiatives. In fact, I'm going to share now for only a couple of minutes, if you don't mind, uh, another, another very brief presentation that is going to be um, 
that is going to be uh, provided to you throughout the, the organization. Um, it's regarding our model. Um, well, sorry, now. Now, this is our model. It's only a, a couple of minutes. Uh, it's about a Food for Life Spain plat technological platform. Yes, yes, thank you so much. Okay. It's, uh, it's an overview of the Spanish uh, food and beverages industry that is uh, the, the most important industrial uh, sector for us, the Spanish economy. Even in the COVID pandemic, it it's, has become as one of the most important sector here in Spain. It's a, it's a key driver for, for our economy. Of course, we belong to very different forums, both in the Spanish and the European government, regarding the both in Madrid and in Brussels, where we have a, a extremely interesting links with the administration. And um, our powerful can be demonstrated throughout the Alibatopias event that is, is going to be held next uh, October 26. And uh, you are invited to, to attend this this event because we guess it's extremely interesting for all of you because we share all the technologies that nowadays uh, plenty of fashion what, what's now uh, uh, doing here in spain or in southern europe i mean for example plant-based uh, solution for example digitalization regarding the agri-food sector and so on uh, our model is based on the national food technology platforms so we belong to the european network in fact, Daniele Rossi, as I told you before, is the, is the chairman of this network, and we are very proud of, um, of uh, uh, belong to this network. And in fact, our platform is a little bit old now. Nowadays, in fact, we have uh, 14 years of, of life. Here in the Spanish Food for Life, we, are, we have a board that is representing the, the main uh, agri-food uh, technological centers of the Spanish uh, society. Also, we have an advisory council that is uh, composed by the main bodies of the Spanish administration. The presidency and general secretary uh, is, uh, is, um, is doing by, by, by FIAP. And we have 11 working groups that are, um, there are, uh, um, that have the, the main presidents of the, our main uh, um, technological centers, universities, and so on, with uh, these 11 approaches. Uh, we have found a strategic and result and innovation agenda that it now it's the, the one that we are using both to include at the, or to the, sorry, to the Spanish government, but to the European Commission, trying to uh, tackle all these gaps that we uh, think that could be uh, improved by, by the administration and trying to include, of course, in the world programs of the next uh, horizon تخطي هذه العقبات وكيفيه مواجهه هذه التحديات بالنسبه لي الانشطه التي نقوم بها نحن نقوم بالعديد من الانشطه في في العالم لدي نقوم باكثر من 25 لقاء و25 جلسات تناقشيه في العام متعلقه بكل العناصر المتعلقه بالغذاء سلامه الغذاء الاستهلاك سلسله القيمه وغيرها لدينا ايضا لدينا ايضا لدينا ايضا قطاع خاص خاص بالستارت ابس ولدينا ايضا لدينا ايضا بعض ال... نحن نعمل على تعزيز تعزيز و... تعزيز وترويج على المشاريع الاسبانيه الوطنيه وايضا نتحدث عن المشاريع الدوليه كما قلت من قبل so we are available to participate with all of you, the one who, who want to collaborate with us, of course. To conclude, I will thank you for this presentation of your organization that should be a source of inspiration for further platform collaboration. And I would like also say that your personal uh, experience between uh, uh, research and private sector should be also very inspirative for, for further discussion. Thank you so much, Eduardo. Then Merci, next, the next.
Yes, the next speaker is Want Dr. Speak now. Is Dr. Yeah. Tarek El Azad? No, no, no. We have Mr. Hisham and Nagar who was in fact to talk, to present before Ed Eduardo, but uh, uh, the screen okay. of Hisham is now on the, on the screen. The, sorry, the pro, his profile. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Therefore, uh, therefore you are uh, Mr. Hisham El Najjar and you are the, 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 the director, the CEO of Daltex Group. You are established in 1964, the group manage uh, reclamation ag agriculture operation, inputs, procurement, sales and distribution operation for a land bank of over uh, um, 50,000 hectares with global presence and commercial offices in Germany, UK and all Africa. Mr. Isham has held several positions in agricultural committees and associations locally, but also internationally, including the International Institute of Food Technologies and American Association of Chemists, EFA, and Produce Market Association, PMA. He is also co-founder and board member of the Horticultural Expert Improvement Association, HE. I, I, since 1995, uh, as well as deputy chairman for the Egyptian Agricultural Export Council. Mr. Isham is actively engaged in global initiative for food security and poverty er eradication and has represented Egypt at the UN Sustainable Development Goals SDG Convention in uh, 2017. Thanks very much for participating. Then the floor is yours. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for uh, having me. It's, uh, it's a great pleasure. It's quite uh, an interesting panel. Uh, unfortunately, I mean, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying fortunately. I'm not. I'll be. I'm not a scientist and a, a scholar like lots of people in, involved here. I could be uh, experienced in the business of agribusiness that I've been a farmer since uh, I was a little child and teenage and throughout my life I was in the farm. As I always say, I learned how to drive a tractor before driving a car. And uh, I'm a nine generation farmer. We're a family of farmers since nine generations now. So land and farm and is my passion since uh, childhood. And I would say that a lot of the information being said here and a lot of the, the, the panelists that have been speaking, I'm very honored to be among them and to listen. Each one of them could present a complete uh, transformation just by presenting their ideas and their thoughts. And everyone was a lot of knowledge for myself. So if I may say that this will part with the, be the first part of our discussion, which is uh, how we can communicate innovation and communicate uh, te and technology to ruler and uh, farm community. And I think this is the real challenge that we have. I mean, associations like in Egypt here or the, the dates in uh, Tunisia and in Morocco, with the associations there, all of these uh, structures have shown a lot of success in how they were able to inform uh, farmers and growers about uh, their operations. And I think we should uh, create a structure or a tool to help all of those uh, bodies uh, to work together to be able to, to uh, disseminate this information and make it workable for everyone. Uh, as I'm saying again, uh, just the, the, the challenges that we are having and the, the climate change, the uh, increased cost of production for farmers, the um, changes in the weather that have been always been, has become radical in uh, extreme heat to extreme cold, uh, the way we try to, to, to find new varieties of, uh, or new breeds being of livestock or being uh, cattle or being of fruits and vegetables or uh, arid farming or whatever, or crops, all of these things are very, very difficult to, uh, to, uh, to be able to give to small farmers. Some of the large organizations are able to access such uh, information and technology. We, find, we have to find a breakthrough of that innovation becoming very quickly disseminated from the laboratories and the research institutions in the North Africa and Europe into the Egyptian or the African uh, community. And I believe 
uh, the catalyst that can help in that is the associations and the farm and, and the farm uh, corp corporations. And that will be, we need to upgrade those uh, in every country. We have to find uh, the laws and regulation system that are governing uh, those associations and those uh, co cooperatives and make sure our farm grouping, we make sure that these governing rules and regulations are giving them the chance to become more uh, flexible and more agile to support their members and help them get, because a lot of these areas, the funding and the, any foreign funding or any raise, funding raising in these uh, associations or these grouping is very, very controlled and is under scrutiny from a lot of bodies in every country, especially in Africa because every country in Africa has very close relationship with the security system that is existing in their, in their country and they're worried about any of these funds becoming more uh, in, involved in the country itself. So we have to find that the farming industry is becoming very, very essential that they are serving the social standard of the lifestyle of the people and they're affecting mo mo the most poor and most underprivileged uh, uh, society. So we will be, our role as uh, exporters, farmers, growers, and uh, non-NGOs and government officials and researchers, which are, I can see that uh, a lot of them are available in this uh, webinar. Our role that we have to make sure that the, the information and the technology is disseminated to all parties involved in the, uh, in the, uh, in the, in the, in the food chain. And I would, I'm sitting here, stating that uh, we are all here we have to find ways because i'm becoming it's, this is a project has been coming for three years and i want to have achieving results on the ground with the with the people and working in the field and this is the most important thing that we find we have to find kpis to show that we are able to reach the information to everyone who is keen to get information and also to train people and capacity building to farmers and growers who are not informed, are not well educated in, the, in that, in these uh, directions. We have to find pioneer farmers in the region where they are to show that they can do the job like pilot projects in different areas. And then they can show the farmers that they can imitate and try different roles. Last but not least is the, the map of, um, because of the climate change, there's a lot of changes in the, um, the, the food mixes and the product mixes that we should be grown in every land. And we have to find very quickly solutions to the farmers what should be grown with the climate change and what should be uh, profitable for their business and sustainable for the business. Because the most important thing that sustainability is not a term, it just has to be, it's overused, it's like a cliche that we have to make sure that it's existing in every farmer, that whatever the fund or the setup that we create is over, they can continue on their own. And we have to make sure that they understand how to continue on their own. And we as NGOs, government officials, researchers have to find ways, not only to give them the information, but also to make sure that after we leave, they continue doing the job. Thank you very much. I'm sorry I'm taking too much of your time. I appreciate it. And I'm very happy to be among this panel to understand and learn from everyone here. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for sharing with us your view regarding the, the way to make farmers uh, aware of what they should do or the information on new technical issues that they, they, they should adopt. Thank you so much. Therefore, the next speaker will be likely Dr. Tarek El Azab. Yes. Thank you. Madame Dora, s'il vous plaît. Oui. C'est Belfadla du Maroc. Oui. Ah. Euh, oui, excusez-moi, les... Monsieur Belfadla. Vous étiez, Parce que... vous deviez bah, être sur le premier panel. Est-ce que vous pouvez attendre le, le troisième panel On va essayer de vous donner le micro. Maintenant, non, nous attendons Docteur pas... Tarek El Azab. Non, parce que nous, je n'ai pas bien compris, parce que vous parlez tout en anglais. Comme vous savez, ici au Maroc, la plupart, c'est des francophones. Donc, on n'a pas pu comprendre ce que vous avez tout dit. Il y a, seulement, il y a... seulement, moi, j'ai envoyé quelques réponses. Euh, tu as eu mes réponses sur le, les questions-là. Et... 
Dr. Tarek. Yes, I do that. I do. Please I... go ahead. I'm, uh, Isabel, I'm answering Mr. Belfadla on the chat. Okay, because I, I don't I don't see any question in the chat from from uh, from from the Mr. El Tarek. Then, uh, but the Tarek. Yes. Sorry, then uh, I will introduce uh, Mr. Tarek El Azab, who is the chairman of CropLife Egypt, and uh, take the commercial lead with the demonstrated history of 20 years working in agriculture and biotechnology industry, and who accomplished senior level professional with expertise in the area of strategic business, commercial and business management across Africa and Middle East region. Please do take the floor is yours. Um, Mr. El Azab. Thanks, Isabel. Thanks, uh, Laura. Th thanks for inviting me to this uh, webinar. And uh, unfortunately, I have uh, electricity outage here, yeah, so I'm working with the external batteries. So hopefully, uh, it's coming soon. So we okay. uh, find it uh, black around me. So can I share my screen to start my presentation? Here we go. So, uh, okay, I'm, I'm the chairman of Crop Life Egypt uh, since the beginning of this year. Uh, I'm as well the uh, regional director of Coteva Agri Science and uh, the chairman of uh, Mr. Pioneer for Corn Seeds. Just, should you just put your, your, your presentation in full screen in, yeah, in sure. presentation mode? Thank you so much. It will be easier. Okay. Here we go. So, uh, I will start with an introduction of crop life uh, Egypt and crop life Africa and Middle East. So, uh, about crop life Africa and Middle East, it's a non profit organization uh, representing the leading global manufacturers uh, of pesticides, seeds, and biotechnology products in, in Africa and the Middle East. Uh, the regional association was registered in Brussels in November 2002 and represents today more than uh, 20 national associations across uh, Africa and Middle East. The association is legally fully independent, but maintains it's a strong link with the global crop life uh, organization and network. Together with the national associations of crop life Africa and Middle East, uh, we are the voice and advocate for the plant science industry. We are committed to sustainable agricultural practices and the responsible use of plant science technology uh, in the region. We promote the understanding of the benefits of modern plant science solutions we are convinced that these products and solutions developed and distributed by our member companies are indispensable for control uh, weeds. We promote that the professional and reasonable uh, responsible use of these products improve the income and livelihood of farmers uh, and their families and have the potential to contribute uh, decisively uh, to the growth of rural and national economies. So uh, we have three main pillars. Uh, for our activities in, in, in the countries we are operating in. Let me start with this, uh, with this pillars first, the stewardship. So we have so many activities uh, on stewardship and I will back to this uh, specifically and I will talk uh, about this stewardship activities we are uh, conducting in Egypt and the anti-counterfeit and regulatory. So the, the pillar of regulatory is mainly uh, the collaborating with the uh, registrar and uh, the registration committees in each country we are operating in, in order to ensure that we are connected uh, with the uh, the latest uh, updates from uh, European Commission and the other OCD countries uh, for registration. For Egypt, we started uh, a project with the Ministry of Agriculture for and the Pesticides Committee for the e-submission portal. For the anti-counterfeit, we are providing trainings, uh, conducting workshops, seminars, and webinars uh, to increase the awareness of uh, the, uh, the, the, the bad impact of uh, the counterfeited products. So back to this uh, stewardship. Stewardship, uh, in general, it's, uh, it's the whole process of uh, starting from research and development manufacturing, storage, uh, transportation, and distribution of uh, crop protection products, integrated pest management, responsible use, container management, and management and disposal of obsolete stocks. 
is the stewardship activities we are uh, doing in Egypt. Uh, firstly, with the integrated pest management, uh, we are conducting the awareness sessions, training programs. Uh, when it comes to some of uh, uh, like um, pests, like tuta absoluta or four army worm, uh, we are doing the specific awareness trainings for this uh, kind of, uh, let's say, uh, emergency uh, pests that can attack uh, certain crops uh, uh, in, in, in a year. Uh, we are providing spray service provider trainings as well uh, to, to improve their skills and uh, helping them to, uh, to understand how it's important to, uh, uh, to go with the uh, best practices in the application and the container management of uh, recycling uh, the crop protection packs. So these kind of uh, activities we are doing with our uh, crop life members, uh, you will find that we are participating in some of the uh, uh, events uh, organized and doing this kind of trainings for uh, improve the full army worm uh, awareness. Participating in, in our uh, members as well activities uh, in the field uh, with their uh, regular activities like BSF with Syngenta with our uh, members uh, of crop life. So again, these are the, uh, the, the, the pillars that we are focusing on uh, in Egypt. So in, in a nutshell, these are our activities and we are open to collaborate with, uh, the, of course, the exporters and the, uh, the industry, uh, 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 big farms and uh, associations uh, to improve our footprint and to, to ensure that uh, uh, the, the, the export of our uh, fruits and dishes uh, are on the right track and there is no issues with the uh, MRL and any concern of the food security from the receiver uh, countries. So thank you. Any questions? Thank you very much. So, unfortunately, I'm, I'm afraid, Isabel, that we don't have much time for other questions. Uh, Monsieur Philippe Rémy, Monsieur Frank Nagel, and Dr. Mohamed Eshenawi are waiting to, uh, to, be, uh, to participate. I think we can have Monsieur Philippe Rémy now. Bonjour. Uh, hello, everybody. Yes, I am, I, am, I am ready to start. I don't know, do you have my uh, presentation or not? Because I sent it yes. to the... Yeah, okay. Yes. Should you briefly introduce yourself, please? But do you have my presentation or not? Ah, it is. Yes, uh... yes, yes, yes. Okay. But uh, okay, but it's I can do, I, I can do it without it if you want. You prefer. <laughs> okay. Or I can share my screen also, maybe. Okay. <laughs> okay. Voilà. No, okay. Well, if you want, I can introduce myself. Yes, yes, yes. introduce yourself. It will, yeah, be, actually, it will be, yes, it will very be quick. easier no, and actually, quicker. Uh, nice. <laughs> yes, yes, and maybe more lively. Uh, no, I'm, um, I'm uh, okay, I'm working at IFAD. I am a country director for, for IFAD. IFAD is the International Fund for Agricultural Development. Uh, I am based in, in Rome. I am in charge of uh, uh, countries in, uh, in the Maghreb. Uh, Algeria, Tunisia, and, and Libya, and I am also in charge in one country in uh, in, uh, in Europe, which is Montenegro. So it's 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 good because we, we can I can I can find the link between uh, North Africa and Europe uh, this way. Uh, so I am an agronomist. I've worked in the in the, as a French civil servant for many years, and I've been at IFAD now for uh, more than 15 years working in Western Africa and then in, uh, in, in Libya. I don't know if you have the rest of my presentation or only that, because uh, if not, I will share my screen. Uh, yes, maybe better, because I think you sent it only morning, so maybe yes, better it, that you yeah. share your screen. Okay, so I will try to share my screen if I am able to do it. Um, share. No, this is not, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, new share. 
I'm looking for my uh, presentation. Okay, let's see. Maybe this would be uh, the one. Yes. Okay. Um, can you see it? Not for. Uh, yes. 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 Okay. So okay. No, I would actually. Yes, but uh, uh, I think that it is in a in a wrong mode. Like ah, you yes? should put it in a, in the presentation mode instead okay. of. Okay. Uh, this one. This one is better. Thank no, it's, you. It's, it's Thank nice. You. Thank. Okay. No, actually, I will I will I will try to be uh, to be quick and to uh, to be uh, effective in the in the context of this meeting. Uh, what I would like to present quickly is the role of the private sector in um, in IFAD in promoting pro poor uh, value chains. So IFAD uh, um, is is an international uh, development institution uh, with a double entity uh, as both UN specialized agency and international financing institution with the unique mandate to work exclusively in rural areas with poor uh, poor farmers. Uh, so IFAD mandate is to invest in rural people and to enable to enable inclusive and sustainable transformation of rural areas. And in this context, one of uh, IFAD objectives is to pro pro promote pro poor value change. And uh, one on one avenue, one of the main avenues to do that is to to to, uh, to closely involve the, the private sector. And this is in this uh, context that uh, my presentation can be uh, of interest for the group. So if I'd, uh, if I'd value to, to promote uh, pro poor value change is, is manifold. First is experience. We've got 40 years of experience working in the field with small oldest farmers. Uh, we've got uh, also a, a, a pipeline development capacity due to uh, our ability to leverage resources. Um, to, uh, we've got a local presence also, and uh, uh, we've got uh, a, a a quite a strong sector expertise. Uh, and then we've got uh, quite a, a large appetite on, uh, for innovation. So we work with research, we work with, uh, um, we try to innovate in our project and we have a, a capacity to de-risk uh, with uh, public sector financing and technical assistance. Uh, then we've got a quite a, also a, a large depth, deep depth of impact uh, because we are able to disperse small, uh, small size, uh, uh, funding, and this is very good to address lower segment of uh, SMEs, micro enterprises, and and, and so on. Uh, we also um, um, we have also good experience in, as a convening partner uh, because we have a quite a, a large experience in bringing together government, financial institution, NGOs, private entities uh, in support of uh, multi stakeholder initiative for for, for agriculture. And, and then uh, now we've got more and more uh, the uh, willingness to, to work with private sector and to expand our partnership with, with, with these private entities. And uh, from 2022, we will have a specific window to work directly with private entities and to, to, to uh, provide direct loans uh, to the government, to, not to the government, but to the private entities. So IFAD pro poor uh, value chain approach is aiming at expanding markets, uh, increase incomes, create, create jobs. Uh, of course, uh, promoting new technologies, adapting to small uh, scale farmers for production, but also for processing, for marketing, uh, facilitating a better governance of, uh, of the value chain. And this is very important because uh, the idea is to put together around the same table or the same cluster or the same platform. I mean, there are many names to, 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 to name that. And uh, to, to support uh, small older farmers representation in, represent, representative in this organization and uh, working closely with the private sector. So of course, in this context of uh, promoting pro poor value chain, the private sector involvement is critical. And, and they can be, they can play uh, the private entities can play a catalytic, catalytic role in, in the platform through different forms of contractualization. For example, we can promote direct contractualization be between a group of farmer and the private entity uh, who take the, the commitment to, to buy the production of the, of the farmers. We, we can also work on joint activities with group of farmers and private entity working together to do the same 
uh, activity, sharing capacity, sharing equity also. And we can go also to public-private partnerships uh, with the different actors, public sector supported by, by IFAD, private entities bringing uh, their capacity, their technology, and producers bringing their products. So in all cases, anyway, uh, IFAD's objective is to, uh, to ensure uh, that the interest of the small farmers uh, are respected and that their, their part of the value added of the value chain is, is increased. So I just maybe not to be too long, I would love just maybe to give a, a quick example of what, uh, what is done in, in Montenegro, because actually it's, it's, uh, it can be a good, uh, good case. And in Montenegro, there is a project supporting small farmers in the mountains of the country, in the north of the country. And in this, uh, in this context, actually, uh, the private sector is really the engine of the development of the value chain. Uh, actually, it is represented by local uh, companies um, processing, uh, marketing, advice, uh, uh, pro uh, supply providers. Um, but all these local um, companies are interesting, are, are relevant, because actually, of course, they look for increasing their, their revenues and their, uh, their um, um, uh, sorry, uh, so I'm, I'm lost, uh, to increase yeah, their activities, obviously, but also they are interested in contributing to the development of their territories. And so it's, it's, uh, it's interesting to work with local private sector in this case, because actually they are not only interested by increasing their uh, revenues, but also the development of the territory. Uh, and actually the process here consists uh, yeah. of, of creating a cluster, uh, gathering different types of actors of the value chain, including small farmers and uh, local uh, representative uh, uh, from community, from the government, from the, the commune, and so on, and so on, and private entities. And the, what does the project? The project supports small farmers, of course, in increasing their production, and the project supports also the private entity to increase their uh, capacity of collecting, of processing, of marketing, and this uh, helps to uh, to uh, uh, help the small farmers to sell to sell their products. So, in conclusion. Uh, we've got um, quite a lot of examples of this type because we try to do the same, to have the same approach in the, in the, in the north of Africa. And uh, uh, the fact is it, it works. It, it can work if the private sector is really involved and committed. But there are also uh, contrary examples where it doesn't work because actually the partnership, the contractualization doesn't work. So I think there is there a field of research uh, to, to, to look at what has been done already in, in this context to, to define what type of contractualization has been implemented, what are the lessons learned from, from that uh, to, uh, in order to, to, to improve actually the, the development, the balanced development of the value chain, what are the key success factors, what is lacking to support uh, farmers, but also to support the private sector. So there is a lot of things to look at. We, we started to do it, but actually working with, with, uh, with the research uh, would be very, very important in, 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 this, in this context. So uh, this is a presentation I wanted to, to share with you, and uh, I would be happy to, to respond to any question you would have. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, actually, uh, uh, yes, I, I believe that we need to go to Mr. Frank yes. Nagel. Just, well, just to conclude, to, that it is interesting to see uh, arising initiatives in very interesting and in the earth of the of this session of, of, of this morning. Thank you so much for presenting it. Bye. This is Isabel, this is Dora. Just allow me one minute, or two, one second. This is Bara Alaya, African Development Bank. I'm ready with my yeah, presentation. Yeah. I don't know why Zoom is showing Mr. Qadri Saeed. I'm a sheriff B, but my name is Bara Alaya. Nah, nah, wait, wait. <laughs> Mr. Bara, hold on one second. Uh, Mr. Frank Nagel is coming. Uh, we will present to you afterwards. Perfect. Uh, wait for a moment, my name, please. I was, just wanted to make sure. Thank you. Yes, yes. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dora. Um, um, I don't need to. I don't think there's a need to show any slides uh, here. Uh, I will just make a, a brief presentation, as uh, as for. So, um, my name is uh, Frank Nagel. I work for uh, Rabobank, and Rabobank is a 
is a bank that was created by farmers in the Netherlands uh, in the late 19th century. It really was at a time when there were no banks uh, financing agriculture in, in our country. And um, today uh, we see that the Netherlands has really grown to be a, a huge agricultural producer and exporter. Uh, basically, we are the second largest uh, exporter of uh, agricultural goods uh, globally, next to the United States being number one. So we are extremely proud of that. And uh, we think that the success um, is partly due to a very good and solid division of roles between the government on the one side and the private sector on the other side. Rao Bank always has been a, a private sector player, a cooperative bank, no shareholders, but uh, really grown because of retaining our profits within the group. And um, still today we have an 85% market share in agriculture in the Netherlands. So that's, that's quite, quite sizable, quite large. Um, and we see that, uh, that we have been successful because of that, the division of roles. Um, and I want to mention just a few on the side of, of the government. One of the things is that uh, what has really helped agriculture to grow in our country is a clear policy by the government on the redistribution of land. Uh, when we see that over generations, um, farms are being handed from father to son, uh, the plots become smaller and smaller. Um, and the government has opened uh, up schemes as of the 1950s and, and 1960s to redistribute the land so that farms could still have sizable plots to farm on. And I think that has be, been very important. Also, uh, taking in mind, for instance, the situation in Egypt. Another thing that I want to mention is that uh, in the division of roles, the government has never really stepped into financing agriculture itself, like we see in so many other countries, also in North Africa, that the state steps in because, other com because the private sector doesn't go in, because the private sector thinks it's too dangerous to finance any agriculture. However, in the Netherlands, we see that the Netherlands have never really stepped into financing agriculture. However, they uh, set up uh, and offered a very solid and simple and straightforward guarantee scheme for commercial banks to finance agriculture in the Netherlands. This has been very helpful. And this is something that could also be considered for some of the North African countries. And we believe in uh, the potential and the urgency of developing agriculture in North Africa, especially because of the food security issue worldwide. It has been mentioned by previous speakers and I completely adhere to that. That having said, I really enjoy eating my green beans in the winter times, green beans that are uh, imported from either Morocco or from Egypt, and they are of great quality and I, I really enjoy the food. This is something that we should be aiming for. This is the, the big audacious goal that also my colleague uh, from AgriTerra was talking about. Um, next to that, uh, the government in the Netherlands has also, has also offered uh, uh, quite an effective law enforcement. Uh, for a bank to step into agriculture, like I said, it, it, it is felt risky because it is dependent on the weather, on, on nature. Uh, there's a lot of uncertainties, uh, but if things go wrong, uh, banks always seek certainty uh, by means of collateral. And then, of course, you need an effective law enforcement. This is in place in the Netherlands. Uh, luckily, we have comfort, which we, uh, which we always very much appreciate. So those are the things that I wanted to mention on the part of the government. On the part of the banks, um, I think Rabobank has been successful because it has been created by farmers. And these farmers obviously knew what, what kind of business they were doing. They knew the activity. And from day one, Rabobank has been recruiting agronomists to become bankers and not the other way around. And I think that's a very important one that for banks to understand farming, uh, they need to hire agronomists. Uh, only then, uh, when you truly understand the business of these farmers, you can uh, do any and, and any proper financing to these farmers. Uh, too often we see in countries, especially in Africa, uh, that there is a lot of name lending going on. Um, 
one of the success uh, factors in, 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 in our country, but worldwide, is that, that we have always been close to our customers. So we always had a, a big branch network. Um, so it was always easy to visit our clients and to see whether they were doing well or not, so that we could uh, intervene when necessary. So you always need a very good monitoring system uh, to, to, to see what the farmers are doing and to have a good dialogue with them. So you can team up. I think that is very important uh, to see that there is a good division of roles. You don't, don't sit on uh, the, the, the chair of the, the farmer being the entrepreneur, but you truly can give him some advice uh, here and there. Um, but nowadays, of course, we see that, uh, that, that uh, being close to your customers can also be arranged in other ways. And that is by going digital. And that is going to be my main message of today, that for banks to step in uh, without the government providing all the factors that I just mentioned, um, they, they, they still look for certainty. And the only certainty they can get is from getting qualitative good data on, on the performance of the, of the customers, of the farmers. And this can be done by digitizing uh, a lot of the transactions that take place uh, from input providers to farmers, from extension services, from all the, uh, uh, the payment uh, uh, traffics, the, 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 the sales of farmers uh, to the off-takers uh, within the entire value chain. Digitizing value chains means making value chains more transparent and also offering the opportunities for actors in the value chain to come up with a decent business plan to make the value chain more resilient and more profitable, more profitable in terms of sustainability, uh, looking uh, for, for nature, making sure that, uh, that, you, that the farmers can offer a sustainable, uh, uh, environmentally sustainable, sustainable proposition, but also to make sure that they receive a decent income for all the work they put in. Um, so at Rawbank, we are definitely promoting um, the capacity building um, um, that, that we can offer to uh, local financial institutions uh, worldwide, especially in emerging markets, also to North Africa. And uh, secondly, we definitely also want to provide a support for setting up digital uh, platforms for, for farming communities. We think there's a great future there. We see uh, uh, initiatives popping up um, in large parts of Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa also, but also in Latin America and Asia. And uh, there's a lot of experimentation going on, and this will be the, the thing of the future. Um, I also heard proudly say the Minister of Agriculture of Egypt uh, telling yesterday in the AU, EU conference, um, talking about the virtues of digital platforms. This is a way to go ahead. This is the transparency that we are all seeking, especially when we take nature into, into the equation. That's where I want to take a pause. Um, over to you, Isabel. Thank you very much. It was really interesting to, to hear from the experience uh, and the specificities of the Dutch government and private sector, which makes the Dutch agriculture uh, successful. I think that it should be inspiring for some of the partners participating today of this meeting. You also uh, highlight digitalization, which would be the, the next uh, topic yeah. of the next uh, session, but I think also this is really a great issue for, for, for aggregating uh, Europe and Africa. Thanks very much for this uh, very clear and inspiring uh, talk. Thank you very much. And then I think that we will give the floor to our uh, last, uh, our last participant, which, which, who is Mr. Baralaya. But I didn't speak to you now. Yes, yes. You have, the, you have the floor, and uh, since we have not so much time, I think it is better that you present yourself, better that I, I, I read this, uh, this, uh, the, the, the slide. Then, the floor is yours. Merci beaucoup, uh, Isabelle. Uh, thank you very much for uh, allowing me to be present today in uh, this very interesting initiative. Um, uh, allow me before to start just a small, uh, I, I'm going for the benefit of time, I'm going to be very brief because I'm, I'm very aware that we are over time. 
I just wanted to extend a very warm greeting to Mr. Hisham Al Nagar that I had the pleasure to meet a couple of years ago in Cairo. And unfortunately, with the current situation, I was not able to visit because I believe that Daltex is really a great achievement and it's definitely a success story that it's a very ideal case for what this platform is trying to achieve. Um, my name is Bara Alaya. Uh, I'm not sure why Zoom is. officers sitting in Abidjan with the African Development Bank and the private sector team that focuses in supporting agribusiness projects and companies. Within the team, I focus on uh, how we can support and, 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 and develop North Africa companies and projects. Uh, in that regard, I believe that this initiative is very interesting as from our end, we are constantly trying to find ways how we can support innovative projects and, and companies looking to integrate uh, value chains. Um, Europe being the, the partner of choice for North African countries, uh, really the, this exchange and, 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 and back and forth between, between different experiences is, is really enlightening on how we can work together. Uh, thank you for putting that. I'm trying to, to, to make a recap of all the different points that are there in a, in, in a brief speech. So what I was saying is really Europe is the commercial partner of choice, but with this platform, I think what's really interesting is how we can deepen the conversation in terms of having the exchange both ways by having the transfer of knowledge and the know-how to really develop the productivity and sustainability and the traceability of the products. Because the more we, 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 we deliver, the, deliver on those, the more we can be technological savvy, the more we are able to develop sustainable solution, the better we're going to have um, opportunities for us here to maximize development impact for the benefit from, of the both uh, regions. Um, I believe in that sense that the Alliance effort to really try to map the ecosystem uh, can really help, help have an overview of where the needs are more critical, especially in terms of financing gap and how we can support them. Also, I think this will strengthen interaction in terms of, you know, there is always the issue of risk perception in the agricultural sector. And better assessing the needs will help have that proactive approach that, uh, that we need to make sure that we design the adequate financing schemes where everybody comes together, both the companies, the financial institutions, and the smallholder farmers, and go in the value chains and address where the, the, the gaps, the financing gaps are critical because they are the ones needed really at the end of the day to implement all the different uh, innovations that are being developed. In the bank, we are fully aware of the challenges in financing agriculture, and that's why we developed the Feed Africa strategy, which is a 24 billion 10 years program dedicated and tailored to support the projects, companies, and financial institutions to roll out their investment programs in support of small farmers. Um, as a major development institution, we are the only AAA entity in the continent, and we leverage that by we leverage our AAA status really to provide competitive long-term financing to this project. Uh, from our end, we view that all the stakeholders are pillars in this for the successful rollout and development of this platform. Because at the end of the day, we need to come all together to make sure that whatever is achievable can be done from the different points. So the farmer organizations are, are, are crucial. The government is important in terms of infrastructures. We are important and also in supporting that type of long-term financing. But really the entrepreneurs and the companies and the projects are the ones that are there that are will be capable really to absorb those technologies. And we are more than happy to see and work together with the platform and in, in trying to identify concrete examples and cases that we can build together and develop together from our end as, as a financiers to help uh, showcase them further and, and really show those success stories and that can provide more inspiration to, to develop uh, further successful initiatives. Thank you for the attention. Thank you very much for this very, this very uh, quick uh, presentation, but very, very complete also and it is really interesting to have this point of view of a bank that 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 position itself as a pillar of, of the cornerstone of the whole um, this, uh, systems agricultural systems and food system thank you so much for this 
uh, point of view. And uh, Dora, I think that we will close there the... No, the... we have, we have uh, Dr. Mohamed Shinawi, who has kindly and patiently waited. He is with us and he's our expert to give his comments because unfortunately okay. we do not have a question and answer uh, period available to give his comments on behalf of the of the panelists maybe. Dr. Mohamed Shinawi. Dr. Shinawi, can you open your mic? Thank you so much, uh, Dora, for this. And I would like yes. to thank you for this important uh, meeting and um, giving you all the support. Dora, if you would like to introduce me, it's my pleasure. Of course. Well, Dr. Mohammed Said Shinawi is a multifaceted uh, specialists in so many different fields, uh, besides, of course, being a major uh, doctor physician and uh, from the Faculty of Medicine and Chance University. But what I would like to, uh, if you allow me, Dr. Shinawi, stress upon is his major uh, activities within the Ministry of Higher Education and Scientific Research, and as well, uh, his role in the, the development of cooperation in the area of scientific research between uh, Egypt and the whole world, and of course, in particular, uh, Europe. Uh, besides, Dr. Sh Dr. Shinawi is the co-chair of the PRIMA program, and, and specifically the uh, Partnership for Research and Innovation in the Mediterranean Area Initiative, so he is extremely familiar in spite of his uh, medical uh, records uh, with the uh, research and innovation challenges in the area of food and agriculture. Uh, besides, uh, Dr. Ishinawi is as well the Vice President for International Cooperation of Galala University. And uh, that is, I think you call it the fourth generation universities. Uh, it's a private university, but uh, sponsored by uh, the government. And uh, it is meant to uh, become the model for uh, technology in education. Dr. Shinawi, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Dora, for this introduction. And I would like to um, assure you that we are uh, in great support of what you are doing and for the uh, inclusion of the sector in the, uh, in the area of uh, uh, research and innovation in general and specifically in the agri-food uh, area. This is extremely important. We had a lot of challenges and we had a lot of opportunities in the Euro-Mediterranean region. Um, as the chair of the Prima, as one of the platforms for uh, the agri-food, uh, we see how the uh, co-management and the co-ownership and co-funding between the Euro-Mediterranean uh, countries is very important, crucial. It's very important, the equal footing between the two shores of the uh, Mediterranean, this is very important. And we show that in the number of uh, projects that's been funded through the different initiatives in the Euro-Mediterranean region. Uh, 
It's very important to have also the South-South uh, uh, cooperation. Uh, this is very important. And we are in great support for the, any initiative to connect the researchers uh, in the South Mediterranean country or, or North Africa. This is very important for us. And uh, involving the private sector is crucial. Uh, Egypt is making a lot of changes in this regard to uh, help in having the private sector being introduced into the research and innovation. Uh, it's very crucial also that we see um, a lot of uh, coordinators and a lot of participation from the uh, South Mediterranean countries or from the North Africa. Uh, One more thing, you will find that there is uh, a new law in Egypt which is called about the new incentives, uh, scientific incentives, which um, allows for the <coughs> private, from the universities and for the centers to have their own startups and they have their own private uh, companies. And this is a very important uh, point that we are trying to push. Also, we are trying to increase the fund for any of the Egyptian researchers who are applying for any of the uh, projects uh, to be uh, uh, having a higher fund for those uh, rather than those who are participating only as the participants. Uh, one more thing is uh, moving our, uh, towards a higher TRL in our projects and in our cooperation. Uh, we always say that the uh, TRL between four and seven is the uh, death valley. So we are trying to overcome this by having a lot of uh, cooperation uh, and support to pass this area between technology readiness level between four and seven. This is uh, very important uh, for us and an area that we are trying to overcome. I don't want to speak a lot, Dora, and take a lot of your time, but I would like to assure you that we are in great support of starting this initiative that you are thinking of, giving you full support to do this, and any logistics, any, uh, any logistic or any uh, help needed from the Ministry of Higher Education Scientific Research in Egypt, you will find this support. And I would like to thank you all for all the effort that you are doing. Back to you, Dora. Thank you very much, Dr. Uh, Dr. Shinawi. Isabel, if you have comments to, uh, to add, please go ahead, otherwise... No, I have, just, I have just a general comment on this session. For, for, thank you, Dora, for organizing it, because we have really a very large panel of, of, of speakers uh, with NGOs, industries, banks, agricultural sector, international and national bodies, and it was really interesting since they were from North Africa and for Europe. And uh, they all uh, highlighted very important issues such as regulation, such as uh, um, pest management and uh, uh, other such, such challenge focusing on industries and links between research industries and uh, consumers and also, of course, with, with farmers. Then thank you very much for all speakers. Thank you to you, Dora. And uh, that we are, uh, uh, I'm waiting for the next session, which will be also very, will, will be also very exciting. Thank you so much to everybody. Dora, one, only one comment. Uh, there is an important event, I think all of you know about the, uh, between the Union for, for Mediterranean that will be held on the 7th of July, speaking about the priorities in the region. And this has been working for more than a year now, and they already um, put the priorities for the region in the euro mediterranean region. And this meeting will be on the 7th of July between the European Union and the 42 uh, countries around the Mediterranean. So I hope that all of you and Leap for France will be one of the partners. Uh, Leap for, uh, for France will be one of the partners that attend this meeting. Thank you very much. Uh, is there a mean to circulate this? Is it going to be a virtual workshop, Dr. Shinawi? Yes, and I will send you, Dora, all the information needed because we already uh, mentioned that the 
priorities will be climate change, renewable energy, health, that include, of course, the part of the agri-food uh, system will be included. So those are the main priorities. That's why I'm mentioning this. Great. Thank you very, very much.